First, yet more alarming evidence of the huge numbers of people with learning disabilities and autism who are needlessly being kept locked up in hospital. It's because there aren't enough carers and accommodation to support them in the community. ITV News has found that four in ten of those being detained may not need to be there at all. And how despite government targets to reduce the numbers, some local authorities in England have actually seen the numbers increase. It is distressing for both the patients and their families. Our correspondent Peter Smith has our special report. Why did they restrain you? This is a distress call. A 19-year-old called Josh phones his parents. He has learning disabilities and autism and he's been locked away in hospital. The red marks, yeah, I can see them. These marks are bruises. He says he is being abused. What the hell have they done to you? They would call him a retard, throw water in his face, um, physically restrain him when he didn't need restraining, and they marked him. Then people was hating him, they was abusing him, and nothing I could say or do was stopping it. He, he, he asked for help, he was begging me to bring him home, and I couldn't. Thank you. Josh grew up at home with a loving family. He was taken away when his mum asked for help with his care. He's now been detained under the Mental Health Act for a year and a half. Doctors have actually cleared Josh to be freed already, but the reason he remains locked away is because the UK does not have enough carers and accommodation to support him for a life in the community. My biggest regret is asking for help. Your biggest regret? That's, yeah. That's quite a stark thing to say. Yeah. As a mother, you wanted to help your son. Yeah, and all I feel like I've done is fail him because all it, for 18 years, we kept him safe, we kept him out the system so that none of this happened. He hadn't done anything wrong, he didn't deserve to be locked away. Josh is one of more than 2,000 people with learning disabilities and autism currently locked away in English hospitals. In a series of ITV News investigations, we found evidence some are sedated and kept in solitary confinement. And for many, like Josh, there is no medical justification for keeping them locked up. Now, from the NHS's own figures, we can report as many as 41% of those being held potentially do not need to be there. The government had set a target to half the number of these patients by this time next year, but exclusive data analysis for ITV News has now revealed they're not only on course to miss that target, they're likely to be at least four years behind. More than half the local areas in England haven't even met the target that was set for 2020. In fact, a third are moving in the wrong direction, with numbers of those locked up increasing or stagnating. The point of these targets was to fix a broken care system that was exposed in the scandal of Winterbourne View. In 2011, whistleblowers uncovered abuse so appalling the government promised to take action. Claire's son, Ben, was a patient in Winterbourne. He had his jaw broken so badly he will wear dentures for the rest of his life. I feel that I've brought somebody into the world that is not acceptable and doesn't, doesn't matter. And that's, that hurts a lot. What do you mean it doesn't matter? Because everything that he's been through, nothing's changed. Not only has the government missed targets it set for change after Winterbourne, even more horrifyingly, Ben continued to be abused in this care system. You have a baby, you promise them nothing's ever going to hurt them, and then you can't keep your promise. Yeah. And I promised him that. In the aftermath of Winterbourne, Norman Lamb was the minister responsible for delivering change. Uh, they stay there for much of their lives in a really shocking way. Now we've shown him our data, the failed targets and the continued abuse. It was my biggest frustration. We made progress, but we didn't make enough progress. We complain about human rights abuses in other countries. And yet here in our own country, we have the scandal of human beings being locked up uh, for no good reason because these are people who in very many cases have been deemed able to live independent lives with support in the community 
and yet they remain locked up in our country. That is a scandal. We put our findings to the Department of Health and asked why so many targets are being missed. We're investing more in getting the right care to people in the right setting. That's why we're investing a further 90 million, uh, recognising that for people with learning uh, disability uh, issues, uh, often inpatient care is not the right care for them. Sarah's son Josh is still detained, awaiting release, though he now gets some home visits. Just a few hours every fortnight, but he goes on family trips, a glimpse of how his life should be. Happy birthday. But at the end of each visit, this care system still takes Josh away, back to a hospital he does not need to be in. What are you doing? He's locked away from society and cannot understand why this is happening to him. Peter, this is so shocking. It's really distressing. Why is it taking so long to sort this out and help people like Josh and his mum, Sarah? Well, I said at the end of the report there that Josh doesn't understand why this is happening to him. And I have to say a lot of people in watching this tonight would agree that they won't be able to understand this because we know the government, his doctors, the NHS all agree this practice is wrong, yet taxpayers continue to fund it. It's coming out of taxpayers' money. The NHS is paying for this. Um, what we can say is that the, the centre where Josh was originally being held, where his family alleged he was being abused, he has now been removed from there. The CQC has put them under special measures and there is now a police investigation into that centre. We're not naming them, but we went to them for comment and they told us they do take um, complaints about patient safety seriously. But when we step back and we say, well, what is the obstacle to people like Josh being allowed to live a full life in the community? And we know that it's the, the shortage of carers that are trained to deal with them, the shortage of accommodation. And that follows decades, not years, but decades of negligence, a lack of investment, and what we now have is a bigger problem because it's no longer a case of someone like Josh saying, well, go back and live with your mum. His mum asked for help with his care because she was struggling. She has her own home life. She needed trained carers to support her. The shortage of those. Now we also have someone like Josh who's experienced trauma. He may need counselling for that. Many people in that situation have had such a horrible experience, they've become institutionalised. So this has become a bigger problem. And something actually we heard from um, Claire, she told me that um, she loves her son, Ben, of course she does, but she said, would I bring a disabled boy into the world again? The answer is no, not because I wouldn't love him, but the world does not love him. Our society does not care for him. And I think that's a pretty damning indictment. It really is, Peter. Thank you.